My name is Dante Volpe. I'm a, uh, one of the main engineers that works here at Seafarer Exploration. I work on all the technology. I'm also out on the boats regularly, diving, surveying, collecting data, processing the data. I have my hands in a lot of uh, different aspects of our day-to-day -day operations. Here at Seafarer, we're working on several tech projects, but the main proprietary project right now is the Sea Searcher. The Sea Searcher is a drone ROV that is uh, a platform that contains specialized side scan sonar array as well as a pulse inductor system. We use the Sea Searcher to identify and locate targets at and below the sea floor. Uh, with both the sonar and the pulse inductor, we're able to get a relative idea of the depth of the target, the size of the target. Uh, we can differentiate between certain metals as well as ferrous and non-ferrous uh, for those items. And th this is all done to give us a better idea and a better location on some of these targets so that we're not wasting time sending divers at arbitrary magnetometer hits that are just going to be iron targets. So we try to give our divers the best possibility of finding something of interest, um, and we do that through our sea searcher technology. So ferrous and non-ferrous, when we're talking about it in this context, we're, the ferrous items are mostly identified by a magnetometer. They're going to be iron rich or iron items. Steel will also show up. So, when you're doing a mag survey, you're going to get many ferrous items, many iron items, but you're not going to see any of the non-ferrous items. And that could be modern aluminum trash, but it also could be the gold, silver, the treasure, the historical, uh, in the historical context. So when we're looking for items, a lot of it will be in close association. A lot of the non-ferrous could be in close association with the ferrous items. Uh, because in a shipwreck, especially from this time period, you're going to have iron spikes, iron riggings. You'll find barrel hoops, mast rings, dead eyes, rudder pinholes. Uh, the list goes on. I mean, there's plenty of iron items that were used in this time period. Even some of the tools that they would have used, uh, all made out of uh, that ferrous material. Some of the non-ferrous items that you can find on these ships as well could be uh, their precious metal cargo, such as gold and silver. That's the obvious ones that come to mind. But they also had various decorative items, depending on the class of ship and where it was from, that could be non-ferrous. Uh, some of these would be you know, brass spikes, bronze fittings. Some of cannons were made out of bronze. Um, and you'll have varying non-ferrous historic items that could help give us better context as to what type of ship it was and where it came from. So finding all of these items and differentiating between them is a very important aspect of what we do. So getting into the systems of the Sea Searcher, the sonar array is what gives us the physical identifiers of the object. That'll give us the depth range of the item below the sediment as well as its size based on the strength of the reflection coming back. Uh, s determine if it's a harder object, uh, softer object, porous, uh, just based on the sound reflection. When we're talking about the um, pulse inductor system, that's where the differentiation comes to play between ferrous and non-ferrous, as well as the differentiation between various metal types. All of that is done in the machine learning software, the post-processing. The differentiation of ferrous and non-ferrous, as well as the varying metal types, is in the pulse inductor system. All of that data is collected Real time, uh, the pilot will get some of this information, but a lot of it is stored in a repository and then it's gone through in post-processing. It's put through our proprietary um, algorithms uh, and it's compared against a model that we've created to determine uh, what category it fits into, what subcategory. So it's put into this algorithm and compared against a model that we've uh, created by collecting training data over varying metal types. At that point, it will spit out a probability as to which category it fits into. So based on all of the uh, data that we've previously collected, this is where the current files indicate that the target is located. So it's telling us with a certain amount of certainty, 50%, 70%, 80%, that this item could be gold, and then this percentage, silver, aluminum, copper, iron, etc. So what it does is it takes that data and puts it into that category based on the algorithm. What's interesting about it is it's continually evolving. So as we collect new data 
we get known samples, we put it into those subcategories and it will uh, further increase the likelihood of success in the future because it will evolve as it is a machine learning system.